Hello, people, and to welcome to new recording slash edition of the If My Heart Had to Wings Let's Game. I don't really know where we last time stopped, but uh, we are here with Hotaru, with Aigekas, small sister. So, are we, what's up? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, is Aigeka here? If it's Aigeka, you are after. She went to the convenience store. Okay, thanks. Why don't you call your cell phone? Uh, no, it's okay. I want to speak to her face to face. That's right. Voice to voice is better. <laughs> I have to give myself a little treat for studying so hard. She bought ice cream, I know that. By treat, I mean hug, dutch cookies and cream. You know, yeah, I know what girls love you. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> uh, you look like you're enjoying that. Jump, <laughs> jump, jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She looked down at God as she opened the mouth while the stuff I scream into it. I gave her choked from the force of spitting it out. Yes. And she looks a bit surprised. <laughs> Oh, uh, you don't, don't scare me like that! Uh, sorry, you should eat it when you get home. I eat too melt. Also, it's more of luxury to eat it outside like this. You want a spoonful, Aoi? Okay, I'll have a little. Okay, say ah! <laughs> Stop talking like that! But yeah, it's embarrassing! I say while putting the spoon that the Gekka was holding out into my mouth. Oh, that's nice. What flavor is it? Cookies and cream and the Gekka an indirect kiss flavor. There are some handy things mixed in, but it tastes good. I'll try buying some of this next time. You could eat at least. I act a little embarrassed. This is because we are childhood friends, isn't it? When we were kids, it was normal for us to pass juice boxes around. Now, it's more embarrassing to act shy about sharing something like ice cream. In other, in other words, I pretended not to be shy about it. So, what are you about doing here? Don't you need to study for tomorrow's exam? I heard from Ahotaru that you'd be here. You went all the way to my house? You mind if I have a bit more? Uh, sure, I'll go ahead. <laughs> she looked so annoyed. <laughs> Alright. The rain that had been falling since this morning has stopped in the evening and the stars shone beautifully in the night sky. It was humid but the breeze was cool. We walked along the empty lakeside promenade and I changed to another topic. I heard it from someone in the robot club. Mr. Tabiaka said something to you, didn't he? <laughs> ah, you mean that? <laughs> it's nothing. The school doesn't prohibit being a member of two clubs at the same time. I don't think it's anything about worry about to, wor to worry about. But even so, you... It's said that Tabiaka is a pretty powerful speaker, even amongst the teachers. No doubt about it. Being in the sights is definitely not good. Well, I misjudged things a little. Amani is in the serving club and has thought uh, it would be okay to sit back and watch, helping out just a little. So that's why you thought it would be alright to be in both clubs? I guess not. But I never thought she'd be that clumsy. Also, Aman is kind of cute, so I like her. Mr. Tobiak is the advisor to the robot club, right? If you don't quit the soaring club, you force you to leave the robot club, won't you? I guess that's how things will turn out. Would you predicament? He told me to choose one or the other. I guess, huh? Please, don't quit. Uh, which one? The serving club. Alright. 
Uh, you guys seems troubled by me bringing this up. Then, holding up onto the railing of the promenade, I leaned towards the lake. Now that the rain has stopped, countless stars are projected on the calm surface of the lake. Hey, don't you... do you remember our secret base? Uh, uh, I remember. When I lived here before, outside Kazami shopping suite in an alley uh, that was hard for people to see down, was a building that had been empty-domed. We made it to our secret base, and we would all gather there and play. And <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, we took all sorts of toys there and we decided to remodel the place. I think that playing secret bases is something that almost everyone must have done as a kid. But we were proud of our base because it was much bigger and better. Well, anyway, it was cool. One day, some bad kids from the next neighborhood came to take it away from us, and we all fought, fought together to ward them off, and various other things happened there. Speaking of which, what happened to that abandoned building? Oh, uh, Winda, Kesigura was built on top of it. So that means it was swallowed in the first wave of re redevelopment. What about it? It's similar, isn't it? The atmosphere in the Sarinx Club is garage. Uh, it is now that you mention it. At the back of the school grounds, where it stands like it's being forgotten by everyone. And inside, Amane and the other Sarinx Club members from years gone by redecorated it as they saw fit. It's a jumble of things that no one understands and looks so chaotic, but you really feel the presence of the people who have been there. That's why it's been so much fun lately. It's been too much fun, so much that I've completely lost myself in it. <laughs> but I joined the robot club because I enjoy it and I'm pre really, pre really happy to enter the contest. Yeah. I heard that the Gecha has inspired the juniors who lack motivation and had helped their construction of their robot to proceed. She has the responsibility to them too. I also want to do what I can for the sake of, of the seniors who are no longer able to enter. That's my way of taking responsibility. So you are... Yes, I'm going to quit after the contest. Uh, it's, is it okay for you to do that? This is what she wants and it might sound a little strange to say this, but it looked like she still had some kind of lingering attachment. Yes, she looks so... with a lovely face. She, yeah, yeah, she looks at me like she loves me. Mm, well, of course. She quits the club because I said that. Yes, of course. It's fine. I enjoyed making robots, though. But I can't help it if I join making gliders too, though. <laughs> Being able to make things alongside Amane really motivates me. Uh, you think so? But Amane leaves the club. You have to know that, uh, I guess, huh? Yeah, I do. You should be a little more impressed. She doesn't want to say that she's doing that for me. Yeah, because she likes me. Somehow, it would seem that the impact of the first time we met was so strong that rather than thinking of her as a great person, the impression of her being an interesting person wins in the end. The truth is, there is something else. This is what I really wanted to talk about. It looks like a man is going to quit this summer. Yes, what I mean. What? Today at lunchtime, Mr. Tobioka came to the garage, then... I tell you everything that happened at the garage at lunchtime. Whoa, she looks so impressed! <laughs> yes, that's right. Our exchange with Mr. Tobioka and... Uh, Mr. Tobioka and about a promise with Amane. Amane's gonna quit. But she's been the super repeat student for ages. 
From now on, I thought she'd be... She said it was a promise to the teachers. Aman is planning to quit this summer. But... If you don't come back soon, I don't think we'll make it in time. That day, after that, Kotaro and I confirmed the work schedule. Based on the assumption that Geha would come back on the expected day, we would just about be able to make it in time to do a test flight during the summer holiday. Never mind making going to the passage of cloud. I'm sorry, I know that uh, what I'm saying is unreasonable. But I can't just keep quiet and tell you about it later. Uh. Yeah. I'm aware that she is faced with a difficult choice. However, even if I told her once it's already too late, Agatha would still feel hard. That's why it's better to talk about it while there is still a possibility. I see. So, Aman is going to quit? Agatha mumbled quietly while she taped her fingers on her chin, deep in thought. She paced one lap around the place and then remembered her hagen dutch and went back to read <laughs> it. It's meltdown. Ah, oh, it's melted. Yes, yeah, what I mean. <laughs> what I meant, yeah. Ayaka put her empty ice cream cup on top of the railing, leaned over and looked down. Well, Aoi, it's your turn. Me? You had something you wanted to talk about? Uh, no, it's alright. Uh, what uh, was it again? I was a little puzzled by this unexpected turn of events. Agaka looked up straight at me. It was almost like she was glaring at me. Aoi, why, why did you quit uh, cycling? Uh, being asked out of the blue like uh, that meant I couldn't think of my model answer right away. Uh, that, that's uh, because there's no cycling racing club here. No, at the cycling racing club you can still continue in your interest, uh, your interest in it, can't you? But you don't ride a bicycle at all now. A gecko looks at me like she knows that I am at a loss for an answer and sees right through me. Is it anything to do with the accident you had in the last race? Uh, how do you know? I can check the results of the race on the internet, you know? I heard about your race from Anchan, and you feel really bad about not being able to go. You, you were up on the podium, weren't you? That's why I was always checking the results of your races on the internet. That's what Masatsugu was talking about before. I guess I felt bad about it, that she couldn't see you at your best. You knew about that, didn't you? At the time I thought it was strange, that I guess I hadn't asked me anything about my cycling. If she felt bad about not being able to come and watch, she should have been able to ask me, why don't you care on? carry on, like she is now. It, it said that uh, there was an accident and that you retired from the race. So why did you quit cycling? Why? Uh, Gekha, still looking up at me, stepped over a puddle and kept coming towards. Uh, I, I wasn't sure. Uh, money. No, don't look at me with such an impression. Oh, expression, yeah. That's why I couldn't carry on. I just... Just as I thought. It wasn't just cycling. She didn't really question whether or not that was the reason for me changing school. She knew that I don't want to talk about it. So she didn't ask me. Why didn't you tell me? I thought it was kinda lame. That I got injured and then came running back here... It isn't lame. It is lame. It just sounds like I'm wish winning. I didn't want you guys to see that uncool side of me. Ah, I think you are cool. 
Uh, what uh, are you making fun of me? <coughs> yep. <laughs> uh, why you? She doesn't know how I felt about quitting cycling or why I came back here. But you showed Katori, didn't you? That, that lame side of you. Uh, why did you have to bring that, that up? That was kind of a wild guess, but it looks like you did talk to her about it after all. Uh, well, that's... I don't know what to say and the girl gives me a sideways glare. It's true that I hadn't told the girl and the others, and when I told Kuchori I thought it was strange. Funny enough, that conversation took place right where we are now. Perhaps I told you because she had suffered a much worse injury than me. She had lost so much and had felt so much despair. Then she couldn't stand it anymore and started to crack under the strain of it all. As I felt myself getting even just a little closer to her, I showed her the, weak the weakest side of myself. I'm really sorry. BAM in the face! Purr, I gave a great big bow! Uh, I can't hear you! I thought you were a sportsman! I had my reasons, it's true, please believe me! I don't know what happened now. She said that she wanted to drop out of school and I couldn't think of a way to, pers to, persuade, to persuade her to stay. So in order to make you change your mind, you opened up and told you something that you couldn't even tell me, your best friend. Yes, that's right. Hey, Aoi. Yes, what is it? Are you and Kuturu seeing each other? Uh, you are always together, so that's how it looks. If you are going out with her, but it's uh, being kept a secret, that would make me feel kind of awkward and I'd feel like a third wheel and I might quit the sirens club. Uh, you are wrong! That's not at all. Not it at all. So, uh, do you like her? Uh, what are you talking about? Your voice is breaking. That's suspicious. If I had a problem with her, I wouldn't spend so much time with her. You mean that girls and boys can't be friends? I try answering back in the way a child would. But I really don't see her that way. If that's what you're saying, what about me and you? Whoa, she looks so bad. Oh, she wants to kill me. <laughs> With such an, ex an expression. <laughs> Actually, there are some people who mistakenly think that I are and, uh, and I are an item. So, you and Kuturi are just friends? Yeah, just friends. She's your number one closest friend these days. I can't deny that. So you and I being best friends is all in the past. When it comes to first friends, there's no number one. You don't get it, do you? To me, the fact that you are my number one best friend is very special. It's very, it's very special to me. <laughs> That's how it's been since we were kids. There's a big difference between being number one or not. If I were your number one best friend, you definitely would have told me about your injury. Well, you wouldn't be at all shy about something like that. A guy who isn't shy about indirect kissing like you can't uh, say can't say anything. Could it be that you don't even think of me as a girl? Well, it's not that I wasn't shy. It was just embarrassed to show it. That's all. Is it possible that Gekha was the same? <clears throat> Stupid Zoe. She likes you. She likes you. You have to open yourself. It would be better if, if you two started going out. That way I could make a big comeback as your number one best friend. Now she lies. Of course, that's normal for girls. Uh, call it what you like. More importantly, let's talk about the club. I tried to first the conversation back to the topic at hand after getting hugely sidetracked. Alright. We're all worried that you are just going to quit if things carry on like, like this. 
Akatar is angry about it, isn't he, she? Because I have become like this all of a sudden. Yeah, a little. But she said to Mr. Tobioka, there is no way she would quit. And she spoke to him quite angrily. No way, really? I wish I could see it for myself. Amana has also been acting weird. She's lost all her motivation since she stopped coming. Um, even Amana? That's why, even if you can't do it now, you've gotta come back. Okay, thanks. Ageka looked kind of timid and embarrassed. I want more decisions! Give me more decisions!